Hi everyone, so thank you all for stopping by again and uh, first of all I want to thank you all for uh, your patience in uh, awaiting the last two videos. So uh, today a very exciting video, uh, we're going to get started on the voicing which is uh, getting the apertures uh, a bit bigger. So let's get started. This build is sponsored by wood to works where you can get quality woods for your luthery, turning and carving needs. They ship worldwide and have a great service to help you choose through their great selection. So first of all, why do we want to get those holes bigger? I mean, like, they look nice the way they are. The instrument sounds, like, good. But uh, what's the big deal with opening those holes? Well, first we have to understand what's happening in there. So we have a box that produces a vibration. And the vibration will be uh, transferred with the airflow. So if the airflow is not coming out of the instrument, this ends up muting the instrument. So just, just stick with me here. So I've got a little cup here. So if, uh, if you're clean shaven uh, and you put it against your mouth and you try to produce a sound like this, like most of the vibration is stuck inside the cup. Like you, you can't hear the vibration, like the sound from the vibration coming out of the surface but not the one coming out from the cup. So that means that uh, if this was totally sealed off, we wouldn't be able to hear very much. At this point, there's a bit of a hole. So let's put a hole in it. We have a hole. Let's try that again. So already a bit better. If we put a bunch, now technically we should be able to hear it. So now the sound is coming out of the cup, coming out from my voice. Now the other thing we have to be careful when we do that, it's not just a matter of like, oh, let's open them up. Uh, we want to make sure that the airflow has uh, a certain restriction. So if you see this like a, as a, a diaphragm, like let's say a, a speaker from a, your sound system, uh, on a, on a very low scale, that the, the, the top moves up and down as you plug the strings. It just moves up and down, and then the sound will slowly get out of the instrument. So what we want to do is like, if you look at the airflow of something, like let's say you have a straw, you can blow in it, to empty the air chamber, and that's gonna take a long time. But if we take that same cup and we blow in it, I'm all, like, all the air is, is uh, removed right now. So that's the biggest thing with finding the right size, the right balance for the airflow coming out, and the sound itself. Now, in regards to the Mando Cello, uh, I did the apertures uh, smaller because if you go back to my uh, video on the octave mandolin uh, the octave mandolin when I tap tuned it it was a uh, perfect tap tune right off the bat and it was kind of scary in a way because um, I could have overdid it and then like you get to a point that you have to kind of put binding on the inside and I didn't want to do that um, so uh, by getting those smaller acts I still have room to help the airflow now the big difference between this one in, and the octave mandolin is that the octave mandolin already had a good projection, a good sustain, a good sound. Uh, this one, it's, it's lacking the, the projection. Like I, I feel like there's so much sound inside the instrument that's not coming out. So that's why we're going to open it and to, to allow uh, more airflow to uh, the vibration of the airflow to our ears and then uh, and, and without overdoing it. So I, I allowed myself a lot of uh, play in here. I want to note that this size is what's on the drawing right now and I also uh, on the drawing I will add the final shape of this aperture so you can see the difference uh, if you purchase if you're purchasing the drawings. So I just finished tuning down the Mando Cello to uh, 432 Hertz so it's the same C G D A but uh, instead of being at the concert pitch of 440, I brought it down a quarter tone to 432. And that's how the instruments used to come out in the 20s and 30s out of the factory from Gibson. Uh, the 440 uh, was established in the 40s for all the instruments so everybody could play at the same because before it was like all over the place. 
So, uh, like I said, it's a quarter tone lower. And the only reason I do that is to tune the body of the instrument like they used to be tuned back in those days. So now what I'm going to do is put a piece of leather under the strings to mute them. And then after that, I uh, will go on the tuner to check where the body uh, tone is. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear, but here's the difference with the size hole. So here, I, what I can hear is that uh, when I remove my hand, there's actually a, a, quite the airflow coming out with sound and I can see uh, an increase in the amount of like volume. Uh, I only did the one side right now. I still have to fix the round parts. Uh, and now I'm going to get started on the second side uh, because this one is pretty much uh, widened to the first uh, attempt that I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to try it and then probably do two, three uh, more times like that because I don't actually have a base line for where this should be. So I'm going to go very slowly. And then when I find the proper size, uh, it's going to be easier in the next builds that I'm making to actually get to the proper size. So we have a very good example here of what can happen. So I just shaped those uh, aperture and they still need the final sanding and I'm already really close to a perfect note. Now the perfect note doesn't mean it's the optimal uh, range that I want. So by saying, <coughs> saying that, what I mean is that right now, my sound is already better. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference. Like the sound itself is the sound, but I do feel more projection. I feel more uh, volume. So I don't know if you guys can pick that up once again. So. Now I have to make the judgment call as if I want to go ahead and open up more of the apertures to get even more of that or go too far and then ending up with the open bottom cup that I, I kind of made the reference to early on in the video. So I do feel like there's more in there that could come out, although I'm really happy right now with the projection, like it, it's already a pretty good step forward. Uh, I feel that the apertures are still pretty small. If I, I look back on pictures of the previous instruments like the, the K5s or like the apertures were way bigger. So uh, that's an indication to me that I think that could be more. Uh, as for sound uh, coming out of the instrument, I think that there's still more that could come out. I'm going to open up uh, those a bit at the top and bottom here and uh, clean up the rest, the, like, uh, the final sending, and then I'll, I'll do another checkup.
Now this is very interesting because I just opened up quite a bit at the bottom here to help the airflow and I do hear a difference. Uh, but my uh, stroke tuner uh, don't really pick it up. Like there's barely a difference from the previous reading. So I was kind of thinking about what can actually do that. And then I realized that to get always a good reading, I should obviously retune my strings every time I remove wood because by removing wood, we change the actual stiffness of the soundboard and that could actually uh, change the tuning. So probably my previous reading uh, that was uh, close to uh, D sharp or E flat was probably <clears throat> most likely wrong. I was probably a bit uh, like more in the middle range than the actual note and then by tuning those strings again uh, I was able to get uh, the tuning I have right now. Uh, as for sound, like I mentioned, there is a big improvement uh, from before I opened those up here. Uh, I'm really close to D sharp and uh, I'm going to clean up the top here of the holes without removing too much and then clean up the apertures and then I will have another listen. But like there's a lot more projection, there's a lot more uh, coming out. I can actually hear uh, the Virzi inside that, that rings and that's something I couldn't really distinguish before but now I can actually uh, hear the two layers of uh, sound so um, and the sustain is just great still so I might I might just do that and just uh, clean everything up do another reading and if I'm like within like five cents of the of the E flat D sharp uh, I'll probably leave it there and take a note in my notebook for the next build So this is how it sounds after uh, we just checked it. And it still rings. Still ringing. So the sustain is amazing. Uh, I do feel uh, there's an increase in the volume and projection, like I mentioned. So uh, let's uh, clean those little areas here and then uh, see where, we, where we're at. So I would say this is right on the money. Uh, now uh, let's have a, a hearing test to see how much projection we have. It's still ringing. So there is a big difference uh, in, in the sound right now. I, and I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna clean up like uh, the, the lines so the lines are flowing properly like there's a where, where I, I went with the Dremel and the transition to the the curve line there's like a little piece here and another one there so I'm gonna make sure all of that is uh, looking visually uh, appealing that both of them are uh, symmetrical which I, I was doing anyway but like I'm gonna, just gonna make sure that this is uh, good and then uh, the my target tuning is basically D sharp at 432 Hertz. So now what I'm going to do is bring it to back to 440 and that's what it would have happened to an instrument built back in those days. So the instrument would have been tuned uh, all the components to 432 and by the 40s everybody went to 440 and that's just for the strings. So I'm going to increase my strings to 440 and have like the body of a vintage instrument and I do have the torrified uh, uh, top, which helps with that. And then uh, and bring my strings to 440, like all the instruments are now. 
So this is uh, a C uh, in uh, 432. This is back at 440. keeps ringing. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clean up those. Uh, it's a wrap for this video. Uh, thanks again for stopping by and watching this video. A uh, big thank you to Bow River Woods again. Uh, check uh, the link at the bottom here. Uh, please like, share this video and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Uh, this, uh, there's a lot of finishing work to be done on this instrument. So uh, I encourage you to follow along. I really appreciate you taking the time for watching this video and until next time, I wish you well.